What's up, YouTube? Uh, we're here again for one of our weekly Card Games United random podcast show that we still have yet to come up with a name for. Really, really, really might want to work on that. I don't know. Card Talk. We probably card should. Yeah, maybe Card Talk. Lee and Andre are bored. Something like that. I like Lee and Andre are bored. <laughs> okay, so uh, today uh, we thought we'd do a quick set review on the Card Fight Vanguard set that just dropped. Uh, uh, Unite Team Q4 is the name. Uh, so I'm just, I have the list here in front of me. We're just going to go down, talk about a couple of the cards, uh, maybe go into their effect if we need a refresher. Uh, first card on the list is King of Knights Alfred. A lot of people were actually disappointed for that card when they saw the reveal because they were like, oh, this wasn't a finisher. Me, 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 me. It's kind of a finisher just because it does give, it does have 10k and give 10k. Uh, so there is some power there. Um, I, th I think most of what people didn't like was just how restricted to Blaster Blade it was. Because on paper, Counter Blast 1, Call 1, and, uh, Give 10K and getting good. 10k is... Those are both good things. Um, but just the fact that it's tied to Blaster Blade is a little annoying. It's, it's hard to you know, like, shit on this card, because it's, it's a fine card, it's a good card. It's a great mid-game um, card. I mean, just ride this thing, sit in there for a couple of while, call Blaster Blades, get 10k, and then maybe build up Soul for a Soul Saber as a finisher, for standard at least. Uh, yeah. It's, it's, it's not bad, but it, it's a little underwhelming, I'd for say. A, I guess for a VR, yeah, it's a little bit underwhelming compared to things like Waterfall. Mm -hmm. But by no means it's a bad card. If I probably had to give this, like, maybe a rating out of a 5, I would give him, like, a three solid 3.5. All right. Definitely a four. Uh, definitely a four. It, it is worth noting that uh, in this set, uh, as we've seen the standard meta develop, uh, it's really been dominated by Oracles and Kagura, and so this just sort of being so cool may play into that. Yeah, it just seems like Rose didn't really get anything too entertaining or too over the top because yeah. a lot of, a lot of people looked at Soul Saver and said, "Oh man, this thing's amazing," but if you step back and look at it in the context of V series, it's not as good as it would have been uh, mm -hmm. if you put it out at like the end of G series. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, next on the list is Imperial Daughter. Speaking of oracles, I like this thing. I actually did have a uh, a original Imperial Daughter <laughs> deck back mm -hmm. in the day. Uh, which, if you don't remember that, you, you, you used Imperial Daughter with uh, Spike Brothers cards, which was really fun. Uh, that's actually how I got into Oracles. Um, I'm all... Eh. Like, she's obviously good, right? She gets you a free draw, a scry... 15k and a crit. Potentially 15k and a crit if you're turn 5 onwards. Mm -hmm. Um... And then she can just give power to something on board. I like that it's 6k, so it scales your grade 3s to your opponent's grade 3s if they're playing Force. Um, Seems like a solid second right option, because I assume in the OTT you're probably going to be riding on Amara, Amara, or Amaterasu first, so then you can go into this thing second, and eventually I think end up building Even up towards then, your if Reindeer. If this versus Amaterasu is, it's the exact same thing, right? Because Amaterasu gets a draw on a scry. Yeah, she gets this a draw, gets a draw on, a on a scry. But this also has the plus 6k ability versus just mm -hmm. getting 5k as Vanguard. Yeah, or a Rayguard. And that might actually be better uh, that gives 6k because it scales better. Some of the uh, OTT yeah. lists in Japan are playing this at a 3, and the Amaterasu has a 3, and then 2 of the Reindeer. But... Oh yeah, a, lo a lot of them play the Reindeer just because it's a real good just finishing uh, card. Mm-hmm. Um, especially with uh, crit triggers having gotten butter. Honestly, the worst thing about Imperial Daughter is just the protect gift, right? Yeah. Uh, because it it sort of did hamstring its clans a little bit. It's not as a potent an entity on the board as creative. the other Excel or force gifts are, and it doesn't even give you extra body like uh, Force does. Mm -hmm. So. That's Imperial Daughter. I'd say she's about maybe another 3.5, I would probably say. I'd give her at least a 4. I think she's a 4, 4.5. Yeah. Um, Dragonic Waterfall. Uh, Amazing card. Yeah. Uh, so, auto, when placed 
choose one of your opponent's grade 2 or greater rear guards and retire it. Okay, like it so far, that's completely reasonable. Maybe we're going back to control style. When it attacks, Soul Blast to one card with grade 3 until end of battle gets 10k to crit and your opponent can't follow Sentinels to guard. What? This... That seems a little bit out of left field for Kyle. I wasn't expecting this this soon. Mm -hmm. uh, if for no other reason than that you just have it, having the draw trigger PGs uh, kind of makes your deck backfire a little bit when a Sentinel stop is in play because that means it's blocking off your Sentinels and also a fourth of your triggers, which is your greater source of uh, shield. So... Obviously, it's uh, it's another card that sort of forces you to re-ride. Actually, out of these, uh, only Alfred and, uh, and Perfect Razor really don't want you to re-ride. Interesting. Um, Higher grade through counts are going to be a thing in standard, I guess. I don't think so. I think we'll stick with eight. There's been a lot of times when people have like, oh, this is going to make you increase your grade threes. Like, uh, I've seen nine. I've seen some maybe bump nine, up to nine. Nine happens from time to time just because uh, mathematically the safest um, lineup is 13, 11, 9. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, most, I, I like the 8. I think most people like the 8. I think you don't have too much trouble rewriting with the 8. Um, but yeah, this thing's a, a big finisher card uh, in the way that a lot of the other things in the set kind of aren't. Um, if this thing probably comes out boosted by that grade one, uh, if, even if you're sitting at three damage, you could be looking at game over game over there, right yeah. just there and then. Very scary uh, card to deal. It's honestly, a big risk to the game. I think overall, just the level of power creep already this early in the set review series. Probably. Yeah, because we were expecting the cards to be a lot cooler, but then then this happened and it's got it's got a sentinel stop effect already. And that's even before we get to some of the other interesting things that happened, like Tom. Mm -hmm. um, and so the final VR, we have Perfect Razor. He's it's definitely good. very different than his original version, which is something that I found interesting, because a lot of these do sort of pay homage to their original versions and how they require the effects to work, but this one's just a complete 180. Very solid card, I think, for Nova Grapplers. I mean, Counter Blast 2 to stand 2. Um, if he hits, you yeah. can Counter Charge him 1. Doesn't even need to hit the Vanguard to get the Counter that Charge. That, I think, effects. is the funniest thing. It reminds me more of, like, a Luminal Dragon than it does uh, Original Perfect Racer. Yeah. Also, if you're playing Racers in Premium, this, this isn't bad. Mm -hmm. I mean, last I checked, Racers were really into Cat Butler and all that, but... I don't know. Which they, did re which they did reprint in the set, or, well... Well, reprint. Yeah. Uh, but for me, playing Nova's, I actually do like this card a lot. Uh, so they did do an interesting thing with the triple R's, in which, uh, like, Royals got one boss and one uh, support guard, and Oracle's got one boss and two support guards. And then Kagero got two support cards, and Nova Grapplers got a boss. So, mm -hmm. it it's interesting that it's just so split, and it's not even like in the past where it's just been things that absolutely must support this specific playstyle. Like, there's a lot of adaptability to like High Dog Breeder, Akane, and Silent Tom, uh, even Berserk Dragon. Which, by the way, oh no, I thought. I got confused and thought Berserk Dragon was Velascosity, and I'm like, you don't deserve a triple R. <laughs> but no. Berserk Dragon, pretty good card, honestly. Uh, Counter Blast one, Soul Blast one, Retire something if it's on the Vanguard draw card. Yeah. Honestly, as Four far as... Four I think, for Kagero. As far as the support cards that came out as triple R, I think they're actually pretty good, which is a nice return to form, because originally we did have uh, those triple R support cards, and then they started printing weird ones like Shiden that no one ever played, and they're like, okay, we're not going to do that anymore. I could even but see we're kind of going back to it, and we got a lot of good triple R support cards. I could even see Premium Kagero playing this card as a poor of, just because it's a great ride target. I think the worst one on the list is, like, Yermo, which... Mm -hmm. Yermo's still... He's still okay, right? Yeah. A great one, I think, Countercharger for Kagero. Yeah, uh... 
8k, 10k shield, uh, if it boosts, gets 3k, so 11k booster, and then if your opponent's regard is retired, retire it, draw a card on flip one. So, again, not terrible, but probably like the worst triple R in the set. Watch me pull, be a four. It's probably watch still, me pull three. It's um, probably still going to be a four of, I think. Oh, it's absolutely going to be a four of. Which is... Uh, just because we only have the one set, decks aren't going to be very diverse. Mm -hmm. uh, so the two cards in Triple R that got the Origin Rare were Usher Kaiser and Amaterasu. Did you like that? Is there any others you would have liked to see get the Origin Rare? Because mm. those Origin Rares are pretty cool. No, I'm actually pretty fine with that, actually. If anything, I would have I would have liked to see Maybe Silent Tom. Um, yeah, that's actually a good one. But not original original Silent Tom. I would have liked to see uh, Valkyrie's art Silent Tom. Uh, mm -hmm. Although granted, this art is pretty clean for Silent Tom. He's he's got that three point hat. He's you got that extreme upward angle. The ghost lady's just on his chest. Yeah, it's, he's got. It's just like it makes him look like this badass mafia boss. He does look cool and sharp as hell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Man, that's a that's a thing to do, and Silent Tom sure as hell does it. <laughs> I guess, like in terms of a suit of characters, though, it's just like a, a triple R in the set. I guess he's kind of yeah. okay. Not a bad backup right if you can't find the riser. This um, is kind of because the interesting thing about a Kaiser is just that Perfect Razor kind of shits all over him. Like, Perfect Razor is a guarantee, stand to your regards, and possibility to recharge your resources. This is kind of just like, RNG, let's see what you can... So, I can either guarantee Counterblast 2, stand 2, or maybe stand 1, Counterblast 1. It doesn't even have a regard skill either, so this is kind of just like an inferior ride all together, I mean... Yeah, I understand... Sure, sure this, like we said earlier, Nova Grappler's kind of got the short end of the stick in the set. They've been doing okay in Japan, actually. I think, last I checked, they were bottom of the four. There, as, there was some as far as, uh, There were some list, I think, that showed them that actually topping above uh, Kagero and the Royals was just behind OTT. It depends. It's probably just, like, all the conglomeration of statistics, but, like... Yeah. Well, this... it depends on the individual area, of course, obviously, but... Uh, mm -hmm. Last I checked, in terms of, uh, like, usage, it's, like, 18% uh, for... 18%. No, it'd be, it'd be like 28% for uh, OTT and Kagero, and then like 24 for uh, Royals and 22 for... Does that map that up? I'm not entirely sure. I did it on the fly. <laughs> it makes sense. It kind of um, sounds like sense, but... Uh, yeah, I think this probably seems like maybe a 2 or 3 for the standard Nova deck, because just like, you could play Omero, who's actually really good in the Vanguard circle. Uh, but... The card also doesn't have a rear guard skill. The nice thing of... that Nova Grappler kind of does have going for it is they gave you a lot of options per budget builds. So. Oh yeah, the case splits for like on idea were like seventy dollars, or the clan splits. Yeah, yeah, but for Nova Grappler specifically, like you have Miss Splendor and you can build a deck around her. You have Battledore Fighter and you can build a deck around him. Mm -hmm. uh, versus Kagero got Vortex Dragon. Good luck building around that. Uh, Oracle's got that thing that discards a PG to draw a card. Good luck building around that. I guess Royals um, have like a budget Soul Saver build they could do. And Royals got Gigantic Charger. Good luck building around that. Um, just checking any other... There's Cruel Dragon. Good luck building around that. Yeah. As far as like budget builds right now, it is kind of Nova Grappler leading the way. Mm -hmm. Um... Even if you wanted to build risers with the VR, it's not that expensive, actually. There you go. Uh, so let's see, any other notable points we want to hit before we just talk about the set in general? Um, Akane is an interesting grade, too, I think, for Royal Paladins. Akane is very interesting. Um... I think she definitely makes the grade 2 lineup. Oh, absolutely. I, th I think people 
were kind of looking at some of these cards thinking that there were going to be more cards than there actually were <laughs> with like effects and stuff mm-hmm. um at the moment anything with like a notable effect is kind of making the lineup because there aren't really vanillas there are some but they're not they're not good mm-hmm. um like the ones that just get extra shield are kind of fine uh that grade one 9k is terrible <laughs> <laughs> the one what, for what, what, what are you gonna there's a there's a Nova Gothler one um, oh they got one too yeah Death Army guy uh, which is actually weird the uh it's, it seems they gave a different type of vanilla to each type of clan the XL's got 9k no shield the Protect's got 7k grade ones with 15 shield and the force got 10k grade 10k grade twos with uh 10 shield which out of the three of those i think the 10k with 10 shield are probably the best because of silent time and premium and because you can ride them Mm -hmm. um and they're 10k interceptors as well so there you go uh yeah so just being a 13k base is very nice for her, and uh, the ability to call Pongo is actually a decent card. Um, yeah, I'm actually might, I actually might. A lot think. of the Royal Paladin stuff is really specific this time around, which is going to hurt its longevity, I think. Because in the next set, when they're supporting uh, Royals again, but they're giving Royals with different names, what do you do about that? Let's be start introducing new archetypes again. So, we do have the... Ah. So first off, we should talk about these Draw Trigger PGs. I like Draw Trigger PGs. I think we've touched on it a little bit on the channel. Um, they're nice. A lot of these look cool. <laughs> I do like that they also gave us the Grade 1 PGs, just so we could have that option of... Uh, of not playing draw triggers slash not getting totally screwed by mm-hmm. uh, by stop sentinel effects and things like that and anything that potentially stops zeros. Um, also, I think for a long time we were looking for a reason to play draw triggers. Yeah, I think every clan has to play draws. Yeah, because they didn't give uh, they didn't give Kagero or Royal Paladin triggers in this. Mm-hmm. Um, no, they got the trial decks though. No, it. wait, I'm lying. Uh, Nova Grappler is the one clan where you have the option to not play draw triggers because they got critical triggers and front triggers. So you can play like 6-6-4. Six, six, um, what do you think of front triggers in general? Interesting concept, but I still got to do some play testing actually around to see if it'll be worth to play over the crit triggers because like Reese standards with crits on them, those are pretty good. They're amazing, uh, <coughs> and I, especially when they're on Excel circles. And I feel like when you kind of play uh, sort of these front triggers in Excel and in Excel clans like Alka Force and Nova Grapplers, when you're automatically assuming you're going to be playing draw trigger PGs. Um, playing only four crits kind of seems a little bit iffy to me. Uh, yeah. I I think they're a little weird synergy-wise, just because you're playing them in XL clans. Those are the things that like to stay on their rear guards, so you usually want to, like... Apply as much pressure and possible. Specifically for Nova Grappler, obviously, you want to attack with your rear guards, then attack with your vanguard, then use your vanguard to stand your rear guards. But that sort of cuts some of the capacity out of the front trigger. Seems like it might be more useful for clans that could possibly get Excel Circles like Pale Moon or Gold Paladins even. It's, it seems like it, uh, it'll be more useful on like Aqua... F- not Aqua Force, because Aqua Force has to attack fourth as well. Maybe mm-hmm. just Tachikaze. Um, so hey, good for Tachikaze. <laughs> yeah, I, th- I think he'll probably do like eight... No. I might test God, four. You'd four. have to do like four, four. Yeah, I think I'll test four, four, four to see how it that's goes. That's yucky. That's really yucky. For my you, you may just want to take a pass on the front triggers because crit triggers are fine. 
Especially since we got that riser that can restand itself as well. The grade two, I think, double R. Well, it doesn't restand itself; it restands something else, right? I'm right, right. I think it might be right. I just know it does some restand effect, which is pretty cool. Uh, I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling. Give me a second. Uh, high powered razor custom is the next card we're talking about. Uh, I'm just wondering if you're looking forward to all the unguardable combos and uh. <laughs> yeah, that's premium. something we also have to talk about. We touched on Silent Tom. Uh, there's also a uh, card coming out for Mega Colony that stops grade ones. Oh, well, actually, it stops normal units. Stops normal units. So you can only stop that with a uh, draw trigger PG. Draw trigger PG. Which when some premium, something which some premium clans may uh, may not want to be playing. Uh, yeah, update on uh, high powered razor custom. Uh, stand one of your other rear guards. Uh, it's a really interesting card, high powered razor custom, because it gets you a plus, but it's such a mediocre plus because it makes you a 15k column. Uh, which just, isn't even yeah, good actually, against old vanguards. I'm actually then not sure if I would even want that with a, uh, a crits now, because if I don't have something that can restand itself bef uh, after the vanguard attacks, I don't know. Depends. I'll have to actually see how the deck synergizes. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, that's gonna be something to chew over. Uh, I think the last thing we have to talk about before we talk about the set in general is the deer. Oh, the one that lets you stack two crits at the top of your deck. The one that lets you stack two crits on top of your deck. I love this thing. I love me a good meme, and this is both good. And the meme! Carlos is actually telling me he wants to build OTT just because of this deer. It's uh, crazy! Just like, oh, what's that? You're doing that thing your deck's supposed to do where you re-ride the grade threes? Here's some free crit triggers for ya! And 10k to your entire field! It's crazy! It's, it's probably it's the fun. reason why OTT is doing so well right now. It standard. also still gets a gift, which is... Interesting. Yeah, not even like the rear guard riser even gets a gift for Nova Grappler. I did find that interesting how there were some cards that didn't get gifts. Spec it didn't. Sense. It didn't make a lot of sense to me. It's not ever great for give give you a gift because there's a, otherwise if they're just supposed to be great rear guards, there's no reason to play them if like the whole purpose of standard is that you have these great threes to keep rewriting. Yeah. Like, obviously in G era, you could just use the excess great threes to stride with. Which but, means like, if. Because presumably they want some people to try, like, having the, uh, what is it, like, Super Power Razor or something like that? Mm. Yeah, I think it gains 10k when it's not boosted, which is pretty good effect, yeah. but doesn't have a gift. So, like, if you're kind uh, of stuck riding that, you're in a bad spot. Uh, maximum Razor. So, yeah, you never want to, you never want to play that as Vanguard, which, in a meta that's going to be centered around re-riding your Vanguards... That kind of hurts. So I don't really see... I, don't, I think I don't even see that as a one-up tech, actually, in my uh, upcoming Nova Grappler deck. I think I'd rather just play, like, two Battle Door Fighters. Because a, a lot of these cards, uh, Maximum Razor, uh, the, uh, the Oracle Think Tank one, uh, Chitose, and Sarasa, uh, actually, I think one of them does get a, get a gift. Um... Miss Splendor actually has a build, but you're not going to get a gift with it, which is going to be hard. Mm -hmm. Vortex Dragon and uh, uh, da, 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 what's his face? T -t -t Gigantic Charger. They all don't. They all don't get gifts, and I don't see a lot of good reason for it. It's not like they're overpowered in any circumstance. Any of them. Um, and it just makes it that hard to put them in the deck. I don't see a spot for them, to be honest. Because uh, at least it looks like with standard, there's going to be very specific deck builds, or very cookie-cutter deck builds for almost everything we do. Mm -hmm. uh, for a little while, anyway, until we get, like, multiple weights of support. But, again, that's, that's kind of probably, how it was back in the old days. That's going to be, like, a year and a half down the road, though. <laughs> Not necessarily. Uh, but I am looking forward to some some of these clans you could, you could tinker with a little bit, and just in terms of what you mm -hmm. run. Uh, it is kind of unfortunate that they did put Silent Tom in this set because he kind of he specifically turns uh, premium into garbage fire. 
Um, I'm fine with the standard. We, we all we all knew that uh, premium was going to be a garbage fire, but it's just upsetting that the problem with because premium right now the problem with with standard is going to be that you don't have that variety. It's going to be also, the same core players also over and over. There's also not a very competitive scene for standard uh, right now because ARG isn't doing standard tournaments. And then Tom's just going to come and shit all over. The so it's like competitively <laughs> right now, meta. and it's like competitively all. Like we have as an option is premium format, which honestly, premium format's not going to be all that fun when it's just going to when be. When it's just going to be Tom. Uh, I'm at four damage. I got a silent Tom on the board. Uh, oh, crit, crit. Uh, oh, another crit. Uh, well, fuck me, I guess. There's nothing well, I can not do. Well, not even that. Just here's my Tom. Here's my. Uh, Ishikima. Ishikishima. Uh, have fun with you that. You can't guard, period. Yeah. I guess you can intercept. I guess which... that's the reason, I guess, why you could play the 10k interceptors, because that might get you over the hump, but... Uh... It's going to be really... But Tom still gets 6k, so... Yeah, I Miss mean... Tom can actually attack for power columns. Well, what is it, 15 with the, on his own? You probably boost him to 22. Yep. I mean, I guess if you have two 10k interceptors on the field, you could theoretically have a 32 or 33k vanguard. Uh, but that doesn't count, like, whatever triggers that OTT can stack and just put all on Tom. Yeah, the 6k gets 22. Man, that 6k really does scale well. Um, especially because if you have a Matarasu as your vanguard, that's 28. Yeah, just, like, regardless, uh, it seems like Prima doesn't... not a Matarasu, uh, Promised Daughter, or Imperial Daughter. Uh, I'm not going to say it's, like, the dark days of, like, competitive Vanguard. Um, I'm willing to say that. It kind of is the dark days. Like, we need to have competitive standard tournaments we, introduced in America. I think that's kind of really it. Well, we will have, obviously, and locals are one thing, because if you don't have an ARG coming up right now, what the hell do you care about competitive? Yeah. Um, and you can always tell your local store you want to play... Uh, D -d -d standard. Yeah, like I'm okay. I think with premium as a concept, but it just seems like Bushiru it is. They Silent kind, they kind, they kind of went immediately for dumb, <laughs> and they went hardcore for dumb. <laughs> it's just kind of just like when they're designing cars. I think they're designing them specifically for standard and not really thinking about the effect that it could have on premium. Example: Silent Tom is an okay card, honestly, for premium for standard. It's he's still a good card for standard. Yeah, but it's perfectly fine. Standard's perfectly fair. Yeah. And then in premium, because, like, you can still guard with your 15k vanilla triggers, you still have draw trigger PGs, you have options in standard to... Versus fight. when you bring it into premium, it and Ishikashima literally cover every single outlet you have to guard. Yeah, and it's just like, I got a nice 20 card hand that I worked hard to build up, and... Oh, what's that? None of it is useful? Might as well light it on fire! <laughs> um... But I mean, that's kind of where this game is at, honestly, at this point. This this is a... I think that the worst part about this set is that it does sort of usher in a very sticky point for uh, the game as a whole. The good news is that it's only a couple weeks until the next set releases. Yeah, but I think even with, like, Tachikaze's new mechanic, that there are people that are afraid of their... Are they just going to power creep these sets so much where, like... Uh, Destructive War is going to kick Q4's ass in terms of, like, power creep. The problem is I don't think it really will. I mean, I know we haven't seen, like, the VRs and the VRs are the big bosses and that kind of stuff, but just looking at the triple Rs, they seem perfectly comparable. Uh, like Death Rex. that up real quickly. Um, Death Rex is pretty good. Yeah, Death Rex is pretty good. Uh, Juggernaut Maximum is pretty good, but they're not really outshining anything from the Q4 booster. Makes me excited for my Alpha And Machining support. Mantis certainly isn't outshining anything ever. Oh, Machining <laughs> Mantis got revealed? Machining Mantis is a uh, triple R. Uh, it's the grade 2. What's it do? Uh, on call, counterblast 1, search top 7 for a grade 3, uh, put it into your hand, and this card gets 6k. Yeah, I'm actually wondering what they're doing with Mega Colony. Seems like they don't really have much of an identity for them yet. No. It, yeah, and then they revealed that ant thing that moves your opponent's rear guards, and it's like, what? Who's that for? Um, Wait, that's odd. It moves the opponent's rear guards? Yeah, you rest it to move an opponent's rear guard to an open circle on their side of the board. 
which I can't think what they want you to do with that other than, like, take an attacker and put it behind their vanguard. Yeah, that's the only thing. Maybe, it's, like, there'll be an effect, like, your opponent can't But then it's open circle, units. so, like... Cool, cool, let me just occupy that spot with my booster. And then I guess if they do, like, back row attacking for yeah, something burner like... burner ant. Uh, if they do something like back row attacking for Aqua Force, like they did with Bavis, that could also just be not a big deal because it's just like, oh, you moved my unit behind my uh, vanguard. Well, let me just have it attack from the back row. Yeah. Uh, I am excited for my Aqua Force support. If maybe they include stun as they also can't move off of that circle, so that you couldn't call over them. And oh, like them. how people got around Mega Colony back in the day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. if, if they in if they improve the mechanic like that, this thing kind of makes sense. Um, because you could always push a attacker to the back row and then freeze it there. Yep. Um, and hopefully they do do that just so you can't be like, okay, call over. On call effects. You have done nothing. <laughs> um, so, just end thoughts on uh, Q4 Booster. I think it's a good booster to start Standard out with. I think Standard's a perfectly healthy game, like, perfectly healthy format right now. Mm -hmm. Each deck seems like, I mean, I know that low TC... It's, it's obviously a little, it lacks a little variety, because there's only the one set. Yeah, but, like, each, every deck kind of has a chance, I think, to compete. Obviously, some... Yeah, like, it, like I said, it, it was, like, 28, 28, 24, 22. Yeah, so... Like, every deck has been getting a reasonable amount of tops, and it seems like a healthy format, and compared to Premium, it seems a lot more healthier to me. Uh, I do think I do think overall this was a good move to pull back some of the uh, some of power creep. the power creep and all that. I do think just the idea that they put in stuff like Silent Tom and uh, Mega Colony Soldier Black is a little worrying because it's a little like they don't really care much about like it's a little like they wanted premium. to actually fully rotate the cards out and just kill all the old stuff, but they didn't want to say, hey, your cards are just worth nothing now, because they knew we would kill yeah, them. Yeah, which is um, where premium, which is what premium is at right now, but then they designed things that are just, like, perfectly good in standard, like that bug for Mega Colony. Perfectly good for standard, perfectly good for the But turn card. the premium meta into a garbage fire. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Remember how everyone mocked Zoa? Uh, yeah, no, you can't PG that. Have fun. <laughs> you best hope you be playing those draw trigger PGs. Oh, but that sucks, then, because you don't, you, don't, you don't get your cool effect grade 1 PGs. I'll have fun with that. Um, it's a little worse. I mean, you may have to do 2 and 2 at the very least. Um, yeah, but I think until at least... For, for, like, plans like Dark Regulars, how do you put a draw trigger in there and justify it? Mm -hmm. It'll be interesting. I mean, I guess until at least Asia Circuit drops, we probably won't have a very sta like diverse standard meta, but... I don't know, as of right now, I guess for what options we have, it's fun to, I guess, play standard at locals. I also, if if there was one thing I wished out of this set, I wish that Kagero played a little more control-heavy. Um, than just, like, maybe retire one Riga and gain a whole massive bunch of power. Yeah, because then you'd have a good deal of diversity, because OTT is, like, a little bit defensive with a big top end finish. Uh, you have... Uh, Nova Grappler as the rush deck. Uh, Royal Paladins is a little bit of an all-rounder. And Jack of all if, you, if, if you had uh, if you had Kagero as a bit more control heavy instead of like another Jack of all traits, it'd be it'd be an interesting kind of start to the standard uh, meta. An interesting diversity. Uh, but I guess they didn't need that top end finisher, so because they did get some control. They got, like, uh, Berserk Dragon and stuff. And Destructor Roar actually might build Tachikaze. So. Tachis are my babies, so you know I'm going to be building those. Uh, so if you, if you had to give the set as overall, with all the good and bad things we've said about it, a rating, out let's of say out of 100. Out of 100, I'd probably give it maybe a solid 85. 85? I... I'd give it a... 77. 
It's, yeah, just like around that range where like it's created it's a good, good standard. It's like, nice. I like I like what they did for standard, but for premium, it kind of just turned premium into like a well. Remember how at least we had some interactivity and some decision they making did, at the they, end of it G did kill premium, and that's a bad thing. And there are some decks that I would have liked to see do more. Some cards I would have liked to see do more. Mm-hmm. Um, but overall, it's a uh, good set. It's I mean, interesting. There is there is still a good deal of diversity even if uh, Kagero isn't just all control all the time. It's still it's still like reasonably mid range. And I think once Destructive so. Aura drops down here in America, we should start seeing some more diversity in standard. And yeah. overall, I think it'll be the healthier and better format compared to compared to the trash fire. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Here's to me probably still having to build a premium deck just because I'm going to have to play premium since some of our friends are like, oh, only premium. I only want to play premium. And some well, because they don't want to get rid of their expensive cards. Yeah. Uh, it, I, I really only want to play standard because I don't like garbage fires. <laughs> uh, I don't uh, like formats that kind of just like have, you know this one thing's going to happen and there's nothing you can do about it. Format. Mm -hmm. uh, OTT and Silent Tom. <laughs> There you go. Uh, let's go uh, away with Good the... luck rushing. Have fun. <laughs> um, so, that was our podcast show review of the Q4 booster. You Your can lucky expect number uh, is 18. You can expect another review once we can see a little more of a destructive roar, but until Probably then. Probably after the set drops. Um, at least in Japan, anyway. We could always review the trial decks. If we had them! <laughs> this is where I put my trial deck. If, if I, I had, had one! one. <laughs> man, do you ever just, like, flip through the channel when you see Fairly Odd Parents is on and you be like, ooh, man, do I want to flip that coin and see if it's one of the good old ones that's going to make me happy or one of the new terrible ones. new ones that's going to make me sad? <laughs> yeah, I've had that. Same thing with Spongebob. I know, right? But okay, so... <laughs> until then... Like there, there were our thoughts on Q4, some thoughts on Destructive Roar, and a little bit of thoughts on Nickelodeon. <laughs> like, comment, subscribe. See you uh, next time, guys. Peace.